السلام عليكم نعم نيم ستيت اند كويشن بليز السلام عليكم اوكي وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته ماي نيم از كولابا اي ام فروم نورث اوف اراك كردستان ام احمد اي هاف تو كويشن فيرست كويشن از اباوت ذا سجدة وين وي هيرد ذا قران ان تي في اور اني ثينك وين وي هيرد تلاوه السجدة ديد وي هاف تو دو ات اور نو And my second question. Okay, Um Ahmed, let me answer this one first. Our sister is asking, Um Ahmed, Barakallah fiha, she is asking uh, that when you play Quran on CD or in a DVD or whatever it is, and you come across Sajdat at Tilawa, there are certain verses in the Quran which commands you to prostrate. Are you supposed to do that? The answer is yes. You strive to find the Qibla. If you cannot, it is not conditional. And you go ahead and prostrate when you hear that. Your second question, Um Ahmed. Okay. My second question, because we are far away from our country, and I know after two days, three days, when somebody passed out, you don't have to talk about or say, um in now and earlier on whatever and it's okay when if we are found out late about a week ago it's still it's okay we call the family and tell them our sister um ahmed is asking another question if somebody passes away we know that the sunnah that you offer offer your condolences and this is how you should do it you should tell the uh, family of who, whomever you're offering your condolences to لله ما أخذ ولله ما أعطى وكل شيء عنده بأجل مسمى فلتصبر ولتحتسب إن لله وإن إليه راجعون to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs what he has taken and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs what he has given and everything is decreed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be patient and seek the reward for that patience from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From Allah we came and to Allah shall we shall return. Now, the sunnah that you do this within the three days. Now, the question is what if you are unable, then we say, it is permissible to still offer these condolences beyond that three days, provided that you were unable to do it on time. Jazakallah khairan. Jazakallah khairan. Wa alaikum. Salam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa Name, state, and question, please. My name is Hanyan and I'm from Mississippi, Columbus. Is it haram to touch your cousin? Is it haram to do what again? To touch your cousin. Touch him? And sit by them. How old are you? Eight. Are you a boy or a girl? I'm sorry. I'm a boy. All right. I mean cousin, female cousin? Huh? Female cousin you mean? Yeah, my cousin. I mean, she's female or a male? Cousin can be a male, can be a female, can be both, right? It's the girl. Oh, it's a girl, okay. No, just, you don't have to. I mean, it's still okay, you can still touch her. But, I mean, uh, you can train yourself from now not to do that. What about this? Okay. Good. So I can, ask, so I can sit by her or I can't? I, I think you should train yourself from now not to do that. Okay. My other question is, is it hard to kiss a cigarette before you're done? Kiss what again? The cigarette or the gun book. Can you kiss it? A cigarette? What is cigarette? The cigarette when you're silly. Oh, cigarette is salah? Yeah. Why do you kiss it? Don't I'm do... Saying, do you... Can you kiss it? No, don't do it this, okay? Good man. 
Okay. You're a good man that you're asking all these beautiful things, mashallah. Good man. Okay. Jazakallah khaira. It's nice to get our children asking these questions. You have a question, Ahmad? Yes, I um in the light of um of Sandy and the shooting, um for uh can, is it halal to donate money to uh, to the victims of the Sandy Hurricane and the shootings in Connecticut? Our brother Ahmed Maher Kharma from Maryland, uh, very uh, close. Uh, his father is, uh, mashallah, I, I know him very well. And I know Ahmed since he's a little boy. He's asking a very, very good question. Are we as Muslims supposed to help victims of um, collective natural, you know, I wouldn't use the word natural, but collective disasters. Everything is with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or uh, he quoted in particular the Sandy uh, hurricane. And also he uh, mentioned the victims of the shooting in Connecticut. And uh, we had a whole segment about this. And we, we said that we grieve and we feel uh, for the parents, but the answer is yes, we can help absolutely non-Muslims who are in dire need. Uh, so we could give them from our voluntary sadaqas, voluntary sadaqas, meaning whatever is over the 2.5%. So you can do this, Ahmed, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. I think brothers and sisters in Islam, in general, we as Muslims must be out there for humanity. Our messenger was sent as a mercy for all that exist. We have not sent you, O Muhammad, but a mercy. And we must be also a mercy for people. And if we can help them, this may soften their hearts and see Islam differently if they know that Muslims are there also for them. It really aches me and, and it bothers me when these uh, disasters happen in a non-Muslim place and then the Muslims are not there, are not the first people to help those non-Muslims. This is the mm -hmm. best way to convey Islam to non-Muslim in a practical manner. So we got to think also like this. And your line of thought is accepted in Islam, Brother Ahmed. May Allah help you. Jazakallah khaira. And Brother Kitty, one more question. Sure, Ahmed, go ahead. Um, also in the light of the Hurricane Sandy, uh, of the Hurricane Sandy and the shootings in Connecticut, and also the Arab Spring and the killing happening in the Middle East today. Um, for um, um, doesn't this is it increased killing and worse weather and and um, and fighting? One of the signs of the Day of Resurrection. Our brother Ahmed is asking a very good question as well regarding the increased killing or death because of uh, collective uh, disasters like earthquakes, uh, hurricanes, or uh, shooting like what happened in Connecticut, or wars like what is happening in uh, countries like Iraq and Palestine and Afghanistan or because of protests or what is happening in our beloved country Syria which we grieve over the death of Sunni there of the Muslims there we say that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
mentioned that when the hour is nearby, al hadith fi sahih al Imam al Bukhari, hadith Abi Huraira, radi Allahu an, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions that time will come when the person who is being killed doesn't know why he was killed and the killer doesn't know why he is killing. Look at this beautiful uh, uh, explanation of the situation now. Uh, you would be walking and imagine uh, these children who died in Connecticut. They don't know why they were killed. They have no clue. They were sitting in their classrooms, going about their business. By all of a sudden, somebody walks in and does his act. The same exact thing with a lot of places. But what we say, Ahmed, yes, uh, uh, it is a sign of the hour. The widespread of earthquakes, volcanoes, uh, hurricanes, uh, flooding, uh, tsunamis. It is a sign of the hour that the increased uh, uh, death because of uh, war uh, or violence in general. It is a sign of the hour. But for me and you, we need to remember something. That this world is a testing place, Ahmed. And this world will mm -hmm. end with death. What matters is, are you ready or not? Are you ready or not? And that is why the command of Allah in the Quran, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O oh, you believe, have taqwa in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa that he deserves. And don't you dare die but as Muslims. Now, mm -hmm. what you have to make sure, Ahmed, that you are, because you don't know when you're going to die. You don't know mm -hmm. when death will come. Death again is one of the hidden things. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kama and al-Bukhari min hadith ibn Umar, radiyallahu anhuma, he says, مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ خَمْس There are five areas of unseen that you do not know of and then he said recite the last verse in surat luqman inna allaha indahu ilmu saa'a wa yunazzilu al-ghayf wa ya'lamu ma fil arham here is what i'm looking for wa ma tadri nafsum madha taksibu ghada wa ma tadri nafsum bi ayy ardin tamut a soul doesn't know where it will die so what you need to make sure is that you are a Muslim, you're obeying Allah, you're abiding by the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're praying your five daily prayers. If you've done something wrong, ask Allah to forgive you. So you're ready to go at any time. It doesn't matter. What matters is you died as a Muslim, then the next life is a comfort for you. Uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he uh, spoke about one of the uh, signs of the hour. Uh, you know that Ahmed were waiting for an Imam called Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Mahdi. And he's going to be in Mecca. There is an army who will come out of Iraq in one wording, another wording out of Syria, to fight al-Mahdi. Huge army. Then earth will swallow this army. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said this, uh, I believe Umm Salama uh, is the narrator of the hadith, if I'm not mistaken, or Hafsa, one of the two. She said, Ya Rasul Allah, but some of those people have nothing to do with this army. You know, when an army marches, people could join the army while they have nothing to do. Like imagine in Egypt now, we have these demonstration, protest. So people are walking to the location where they are supposed to meet, and people join in. Exactly like this. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, they will die, listen to this, ثُمَّ يُبْعَثُونَ عَلَى نِيَّتِهِمْ Then everybody will be resurrected according to his intention, according to the last thing they died on. ف, uh, يعني, we cannot, Ahmed, we cannot at the end of the day protect ourselves against anything. You can be asleep, 
you know, there are people who are in their bed and they sleep and they die. They wake up, they wake up in the morning, they, they say they are dead. So there is no protection from death. قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ Tell them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, death which you, you flee from, it will meet you. أَيْنَمَا تَكُونُوا يُدْرِكُمُ الْمَوْتُ وَلَوْ كُنْتُمْ فِي بُرُوجٍ مُشَيَّدَةٍ Wherever you are, death will overtake you, even if you place yourselves in fortified fortress. And high up fortified first fortress. So what you need to worry about, dear viewers, is you make sure that when the angel of death comes to take that soul, you are a Muslim. Mm -hmm. This is the real success, and that's what you should worry about. Jazakallah khairan, Ahmed, and uh, good to hear from you. Barakallah fi. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Naam, name, state, and question, please. Malaikum salam. Yeah, I heard you. Assalamu alaikum. Naam, name, state, and question, please. Dear brother, can you. Can you please talk to me from the phone and leave the TV alone because this is going to take forever here. Assalamu alaikum. Ya akhi, leave that leave the TV alone. Just talk to me from the phone. Hello? Allahu Akbar. Tayyib. I'll wait for you. Ya akhi, assalamu alaikum. All right. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Naam, name, state, and question, please. Is it the house? Okay. Is it the city? Yes. Your question, Ibtihal, go ahead. My question was if you miss Salah Hadith because you were at school, it can sully the us. Do you say I do it as twice because you miss a lahdah or just once? You just have to make up the salah when you uh, arrive home. But Ibtihal, I would advise you to pray in school. Why not pray in school? Why not ask the school to allow you to pray? How, it's, not, it's not a school. No, so what? You can still pray there. No one can stop you. Listen, do you have other Muslims there? One and my sister and my cousin. Why didn't you guys pray together? If the school stops you, just take a letter from the imam of the local masjid and present it to the principal or to the teacher and let them know that at a certain time you have to go to pray. And I'm telling you, they're going to allow you. All right. Salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Salaamu alaikum. Uh, we should be live. Are we live again? <laughs> yeah, this is Zainab from um, Las Vegas. Yeah, Sister Zainab, are we live? So? Yes. All right. I guess I don't know what's going on. We have snow here tonight in Denver. It's snowing tonight. <laughs> oh, okay. My question is, um, I want to know if it is sure to write um, Ayatul Kursi on a paper and then hang it on your car or in front of the door? Absolutely. Is that Absolutely, absolutely, don't do it. Oh, okay. Jazakallah khair. MashaAllah, you're so obedient, Sister Zainab. May Allah reward you. I wish all the Muslims are like you. Jazakallah khair. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have two questions. Okay. The first one is when people tell choose to be cremated when they die. Do you still get the punishment of the grave? Muslim, are you, uh, you're a Muslim, right? I'm assuming. Yeah, um, okay, Muslims, yeah, but, uh, Muslims should not even do that. Yeah, I know, but like Hindus. Okay, that's another question. But you see, I got to make sure that we make this clear because cremation is not permissible in Islam. Uh, what about yeah, this? What about this? I'll tell you a story. Yeah. Uh, 
a long time ago, right before the sending of the Prophet وسلم, there was a man, he called upon his children when he's about to die. He said to them, what kind of a father was I to you? They said, a wonderful one, you're a good father. You took care of us. He said, I want you to do something for me. When I die, burn my body, crush my bones, wait for a windy day and take half of my ashes and cast it in the sea and the other half in the land. Now he thinks what? فَإِنَّهُ إِنْ قَدَرَ اللَّهُ عَلَيَّ لَيُعَذِّبَنِي عَذَابًا لَا يُعَذِّبُهُ أَحَدًا مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ If Allah is able to bring me back, He will punish me. Of course, if your Muslim father or, or mother leaves such a will, don't implement it. Don't execute. Because for us to execute a will of a deceased, it must match the Sharia, the religion. لا طاعة لمخلوق في معصية الخالق. Even if he is dead, no one is entitled to any obedience at the expense of the disobedience of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Even if he is deceased, of course, in this case, his children executed. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded earth to bring forth his ashes and commanded the sea to bring forth his ashes. And here he was standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah asked him, what made you do this? Qala makhafatuk, because of your fear, O Allah. In one of the wording of this hadith, that he used to steal the shrouds of the deceased. Imagine people going to the cemetery and, 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 and bury their deceased. He would go and dig the grave and take the shrouds out and resell it. <laughs> what a sin. But or the important thing here, which answers your question, even if you burn in the air or a fish eats you, you still gonna go exactly through what any other person who dies, um, I mean, I hate to use natural death, there is no such a thing, but just to bring the point across, meaning his body is, is there. Jazakallah khaira. Uh, I have a second question. All right, go ahead, please. Um, I was taught to teach the Quran when I'm done reading, is that okay? You do what again? I was taught to give the Quran. No evidence for this. I would not do it. But because there is no evidence for that. About kissing the Quran after finishing the recitation, there is no evidence for it. Listen, if you want to honor, respect the Quran, memorize it, recite it, understand it, implement it in your life, teach it to others, this is how you show respect for the Quran. But we never heard that any of our companions, our messenger, our righteous predecessors did this. That is why we say, do not do it. Jazakallah khairan. Jazakallah khairan. Wa I want to say to Um Adam, regarding her question, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'll have to, uh, I hope she's watching. I want to say Jazakallah khairan, Um Adam, for uh, loving the show, and we ask Allah to grant us sincerity so that we get the reward. Um, Adam, the, the issue which you're bringing up is very crucial uh, because of the nature of it. Uh, but I'm telling you, it is established by evidence in the Sunnah. You have to do it. You have no choice once it comes to males. Once it comes to females, there is evidence for it. But you have to check the area and see if there is a need for it or not. And I have to leave it at this because it's crucial once it comes to the law of the land here. Jazakallah khairan.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته نعم نيم ستيت اند كويشن بليز برادر عبد الرحيم انا عم كولينج فروم نورث كارولاينا يس عبد الرحيم اند يور كويشن تونايت برادر ماي كويشن از اف يو ابلاي ا جوب اند يا اف يو ابلاي ا جوب اي مين ذا بيرسون هو از جاست جيفين يو ذا جوب از ا فيميل اند شو ون شيك يور هاند اي مين I understand. I mean, sometimes I mean it, it has to come with a lot of explanation. Is it? I mean, it, it's sometimes in the intention. But can we shake their hand? I mean, just for that. I mean, I know it's just like. I mean, but I don't want to. I mean. Abd al Rahim. Abd al Rahim. You want me to give you a license to shake women's hand? Is that what you're trying to do tonight? I tell you no. You cannot do it. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Abdul Rahim. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't do that, Akhi. Find another person to give you that license, but I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, Brother Kareem. Normally, I don't do it, but I mean, normally, you see. I, I understand, Abdul Rahim. Yeah. I I understand, but but try to do education before you go to the interview. Inshallah. I would call. I would call your manager and let them know that I cannot do this. Uh, you understand? Before it is up there. Yes, before arrival. You have to do education because uh, you don't want to offend them. Let them know what you do and what you cannot do. And I'm telling you, Abdul Rahim, they will respect that because you're straightforward. Uh, yes, you you understand? Right. And, you know, but quite frankly, الحديث صحيح. لَإِنْ يُضْرَبْ أَحَدُكُمْ بِمِخْيَطْ فِي رَأْسِ خَيْرُ اللَّهِ مِنْ أَنْ يَمَسَّ مْرَأَ لَا تَحِلُّ لَهِ For you to be stabbed with a needle, not a small needle. You know, mikhyat, the needle that we used to, 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 to use in the countryside to do stuff. Huge needle in your head and you bleed is better for you than touching a woman that you're not supposed to touch. With that text, I can't give you a license. I'm sorry, Abdul Rahim. Even so, I love you, brother. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, name, state, and question, please. My name is Adam. I'm calling from Mississippi, and my question is: um, when I sleep at night, like around Qiyam, um, sometimes I get my phone and I put on a surah and I recite the surah after him for a long so I don't know. Is that permissible? So you pray behind the phone? No, I don't pray behind the phone. I pray by myself. Like I read the Fatiha by myself. No, now I recite a long story that I don't know. I put, I, like, I turn my phone on and I just repeat after the reciter. Oh, you cannot repeat after the reciter, but you need to recite. I recite it. But don't but repeat that, after. You, you see, you're not supposed to hear the reciter. Our sister is asking when she prays the Hajj that night and she wants to recite long surahs. Can she play the Quran and repeat after a reciter from the phone? The answer is no. But it is permissible to open the Quran, whether it is in your phone or whether it is uh, in front of you, and read from the Quran. Sorry, yeah. but I can't put no sound on. Say? But I can't listen to him. I can't no, you can't do that. I... No, you cannot do that. You, you, you have to recite yourself. How about, is it, how about the da'at when I, when I do the unless, like, I want to do da'at? I can't do that either. No, you cannot do that either. You see, the only time that you pray this way if and you're not even allowed to recite is when you pray in jama'ah. But apart mm -hmm. from that is no. Jazakallah khairan. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Naam, name, state and question please. Uh, yeah, this is Um Ahmed again from uh, yes. I have a question. Um, I know it's in Islam you cannot uh, not, not talking to your brother or sister Muslim for three days, more than that three days. Yeah. But if they are uh, not good for you, you know it is if you around them maybe is it uh, something bad for you and not, is it nothing good for for you. 
That's why I'm keeping myself and my family. How about that? So b basically, you're asking, our sister is asking Umm Ahmed here about um, family members or brothers or sisters in Islam or family members? Blood, blood brothers or what? Family members, right. friends. Okay, family members, uh, she said that you're not supposed to boycott, uh, you're not supposed to boycott any Muslim, by the way, regardless of whether he or she uh, is a family member or not. Uh, more than three days. لا يحل لامرئ أن يقطع أخا فوق ثلاث. It is not permissible that you boycott your brother or your sister more than three days. Now, uh, she mentioned a very sensitive area where uh, the people are bad influence or they are fitna for her. Uh, meaning if she uh, ends up calling them, she gets in trouble, or she finds them doing wrong things, what should be the situation? I tell you, if you can protect your deen, and meanwhile still give them da'wah, still explain the, to them the wrong thing which they are doing, I would encourage you to do that, and this is the best thing. This case, you don't end up boycotting them, Add to this, you end up helping them come out of the zone of sinning which they are engaged at. But if this is going to happen at the expense of your deen, it will cause you to fitna, it will cause your deen to go down, then I tell you, stay away, but keep the least level or standard of communication possible. Assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum assalam. How are you doing? Good to hear your voice, mashallah. Assalamu alaikum. See you again. Don't boycott them. You still, when you see them, be nice and just move on with your life. Jazakallah khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Naam, name, state, and question. Hi, my name is Hazlin. I'm in Denver, Colorado. And my question is, what, what do we do with, like, it's time to pray while you're at school? Our brother is asking, what should you do when it's time to pray when you're in school? I tell you right now, come to Abu Bakr. He's from Denver. I will give you a letter to your school saying that as a Muslim, you must pray on time. If you can initiate this with your Muslim friends in that school, just make sure that you contact them and let them know that you're going to pray Dhuhr or Asr at this time, at this place. The school should be able to provide you with the logistics. Just present that letter to them and you should pray on time. Jazakallah khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Naam, name, state, and question, please. Hello? Yes, I can hear you, Akhti. Name, state, and question, please. Yes, I'm, I'm from New York. Okay. Yeah, my question is I'm working and doing the work uh, of Salat al Dhuhr when I. Uh, I'm working, and when I have my break, I go to my car to do my uh, my salad. Sitting, sitting in my car. Yeah, the problem with this, so, the problem with this, that standing, standing in the mandatory salah is a pillar of the salah. لقول الله تعالى وقوموا لله قانتين. ولقول النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لأمران بن حسين صل قائمة فإن لم تستطع فقاعدة Now, when we use the word ركن in an act of worship that means the act is invalid without fulfilling that pillar provided that you're able to in this case you're able Now I tell you, my sister, 
try to find another location um, somewhere where you can stand and pray. Try, strive. But, yeah, but with you, my, let me finish. My, ya Ukhti, my, ya Ukhti, ya Ukhti, let yeah. me finish. Barakallah fiq. With this, yeah. with this, we have to also make sure that you're not being seen or watched by others. So the place also have uh, to hide you in a way. Now, yeah, Ya Ukhti, let me finish. Barakallah fiq, Ya Ukhti. Oh, oh, now, if you cannot find, if you cannot find this, then I tell you, go ahead and pray when you get home. But every day, you must strive to find that place where you can stand, the place that can hide you. If you're unable to, then you pray when you get into your home. Jazakallah khair. Shukran. Afwan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Naam, name, state and question, please. Yeah, my question is... Uh... Cigarettes you smoke, like is haram or is not haram? What is that now? If you smoke ciga cigarettes, is haram or is not haram? <laughs> it is haram. <laughs> smoking cigarettes, huh? smoking cigarettes, smoking shisha, yeah. smoking hookah, smoking whatever it is, is haram. Why? No, I'm not saying shisha, uh, only cigarettes. It's, ha haram? it's haram, cigar is haram, cigarettes is haram, shisha is haram, hookah is haram. Everything is haram, 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 haram. <laughs> Jazakallah khaira. Or, or, uh, uh, I have another question. Yes, but, but do you know why it's haram so? Why? Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, Wala, yeah, look at this now. Look at this. Wala taqtulu anfusakum. Do not kill yourselves. Medicine, oh, yeah. medical specialist, the people who are in the medical field, researches work has been done by the health uh, whatever it is in the united nations health what yeah they tell you that smoking is a killer based on this we tell the brothers don't kill yourself jazakallah khaira